All right, shalom, shalom. First and foremost, just as always, I would like to give all praises, all honor, and all glory unto Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakaha Kwadash, which is the Paleo Hebrew, in the name of the Heavenly Father, the Ancient of Days, the Creator of all energy, being Yahweh, and that of His Son, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus, being Yahweh Shai. Those are the only names in which salvation may be obtained, whether you have been given the Spirit to receive that knowledge or not. I'd like to give double honors unto the elders and the apostles at GMS Grand Millstone who have taught me this truth and who do rule well today through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Once again, whether you've been given that knowledge or not through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, peace, love, blessing, salutations be unto the elect of the nation of Israel, man. All you sincere, hopeful members of the elect who are doing your best to make the calling of your election sure, man. You see, may you keep up the good fight and endure and get through these times to come, man. Part of the uh, endurance we must go through, all right, as we see here, is, uh, uh, you know, these trials and tribulations upon going to camp, upon, you know, doing what we got to do, man. All right, you're going to deal with particular things, and it may not even be just, you know, while you're at camp. You know, it may be things in your day-to-day -day life. It may be your boss at work. You know, you're going to go through particular things, that's going to cause you to, uh, you know, really take an L on this side, man. To bear shame on this side. All right. But as, you know, the elder apostle Kabar goes in on this uh, uh, video, you see, we got to, uh, uh, you know, we got to ensure that we don't get carnal minded, man. That we don't get into our emotions and always understand that this thing is bigger than us, man. You know, definitely a lot of beautiful points made in this video if you haven't watched it already. But, uh, you know, stirred up the spirit within me to do a, uh, you know, to, to, to add on to it, so to speak, man. So anyway, this is, um, go, go ahead and dive right into some scriptures here, man. This is the book of, uh, Matthew. All right, because it made me think of some examples that we've had. Matthew chapter 26 and verse 53, and it reads, Thinkest thou that I cannot pray to my Father, and he shall presently give me more than 12, 000, or 12 legions of angels? And a legion is 7,000 roughly. You see? So this is Yahweh Shai saying, Look, I could call upon the Heavenly Father and get 12 legions of angels to come. And deliver me from this condition, man. To deliver me from, from this lot. You see? But at the end of the day, all right, uh, the sacrifice has to be made, man. We have to go through the fire in order to obtain, all right, the uh, 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 the glory. All right, as it is written here, we'll jump back to this Matthew's Lord willing. This is the book of uh, St. Ezra's chapter 7. And verse 9, it says, If this city were now given unto a man for an inheritance, if he never shall pass the dangers set before it, how shall he receive this inheritance? Right. How are you going to receive the, an inheritance, this inheritance in particular, being the kingdom of heaven? All right. Being the, uh, 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 you know, those joint heirs, man. The um, first dominion, you see being crowned by Yahweh Shai without going through the hardships, man, the dangers that are set before it, man. What did Isaiah say? I gave my back to the smiters, right? Because, you, again, this is going to come with trials and tribulations, which really is a proof of your faith, man. You see? Um. Anyway, going on, it says... Um, let's see, verse 10, it says, And I said, It is so, Lord. Then he said unto me, Even so is Israel's portion. Right? So even so is our portion, man. We got to go through these, these, these hardships to be able to obtain, all right, our uh, uh, inheritance, man. All right, and let's go ahead and jump back a little bit. Verse, uh, verse 6, it reads, 
There is also another thing. A city is builded and set upon a broad field and is full of good things. The inheritance thereof is narrow and set in a dangerous place to fall, like as if, as if there were fire on the right hand and on the left hand deep water. Right, so on both sides, <laughs> it's, it's, it's ultimately death, man. You see, death on either side. So you got to maintain that balance and that straight walk. You see, Yahweh Shai spoke of what? The straight gate, man. Being a, a symbolic to what we would have to overcome. And again, you can't overcome without having to go through these things, man. So Yahweh Shai knew it, and that's why, <laughs> you know, several times he could have, you know, taken things into his own hands. But why? Right? And the reason I say why is this right here. This is the book of Romans, chapter 8, and verse 38. It says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. You see, death, man. Even angels or principalities, the powers of this world, man. None of this could do what? Going on verse 39. Nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of our power, which is in Hamashiach our Lord. You see? Nothing could separate us, man. Nothing could separate us from the Most High. So, really, there's no need to get carnal and in your emotions and in your feelings, man. Because we cannot be severed from Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai so long as we endure, man. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 17. It says, No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. You see that, man? No weapon that is formed against you will prosper, will be able to uh, uh, to overcome. It says, and uh, you know, another, another scripture that goes hand in hand with this is uh, uh, the book of Proverbs, man. He that diggeth a pit shall fall therein. You see? Look at King David, for example, man. All these different plans to, to kill King David, and the Heavenly Father protected him throughout all of it. It says, And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. You see? This is the heritage of the servants of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. And is not that what we are? Did we not give up our lives in this world and particular things of it to serve the Heavenly Father? So therefore, what? No weapon that is formed against you will prosper. It says, And their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Because really, man, you're going to realize, you're going to have particular demons come up to camp that their whole motive is to get you to, to act out of pocket, man. To get you to get into your emotions, which is going to cause you to ultimately be put into the hands of of the cruel one, man. They're going to they're going to be justified in condemning you. Why? Because you didn't act in faith. You see? You got carnal, which is exactly what they're doing, man. And really at the end of the day, they may think they're doing it for a particular reason. You know, maybe they just have fun being a damn demon. But at the end of the day, man, we know you how by Shimi Shai is in control. So this is an act to get you to, to harden and sharpen more and more. Which is why the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, goes into this. It says, verse 5, it says, And having been a little chastised, a little chastised, man, Going through these particular things, having them come up and, 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 and test you and test you and test you, right? This has been bringing forth, you know, obstacles that you have to overcome. They shall be greatly rewarded. 
You see, they will be greatly rewarded, man. And I've seen, you know, there's there's been a, a few times where things like this have come into fruition at camp, man. One that comes to mind, there was a, a time where we were, you know, holding camp and, uh, you know, a group of people came up just acting all sorts of wild and a dude pulled a gun out, man. And eventually, eventually the cops got called. So apparently some random person called the, called the police or something. And they came and, uh, you know, they ended up, they, they, they saw the video, you know, of course, of course we're recording at camp and they went and, uh, you know, they, and they, uh, they addressed the, the, the other people, man. The guy that had his, and I remember even when he was pulling his gun out, you know, at, trying to act some type of way, I started, you know, thinking upon the most high and, and, and make a mention of how, you know, we've come out here to, to do the work of the heavenly father, man. And I was, you know, I wasn't in no fear of whatever the, the, the case was going to be because I knew and understood, man, just like, you know, just like all these examples that we have, that we were doing the work of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. What do you think gave King David the courage, you see, to, to, to stand up against Goliath, man? He couldn't even, he, he was too small even to wear Saul's armor, even to, to, to really to bear his sword, man. What did he make mention of? How Goliath was, was blaspheming the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. So he, he knew that Goliath would fall, man. So these scoffers, man, you know, these, these people that have motives out there just, just for car carnal reasons, you already know that you're going to have the victory, man. There ain't no need to get carnal. Now, if they attack you, that's a different story, man. And the Heavenly Father will give them into your hand. Seeing as how they came up acting some type of way, man. But if you go and you act out of pocket, man, Hey, the Heavenly Father very well could, you know, give you into their hand, man. Another thing that, that happened, one of the brothers got jumped on and uh, a, a, a damn lesbian tried to stab him, man. She actually did stab him like a good, you know, five times by the time I had, you know, stripped her off of him. And, you know, when everything was all said and done, that brother had no mark on his body whatsoever, man. Again, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. We serve the power that both kills and makes alive, man. You see? And if the Heavenly Father does have it to where, you know, a, a, a scoffer or whatever, you know, gets his hands on you, man. Hey, what do we just read? Death. Not even death could separate you from Yahweh Bachim Yahweh Shai. This is uh, going on, it says, verse 5, And having been a little chastised, see, a little chastised, they shall be greatly rewarded for God proved them. So the Heavenly Father proved us, man. We went through all this shit and endured and found them worthy of himself. So he found them worthy of himself, man. Because they overcame and went through all this hell and, and, and did what they had to do, man. This is, um, you know, I'm going to go ahead and grab Isaiah, another scripture in Isaiah real quick. Isaiah chapter 50 and verse 5. It says, The Lord power hath opened mine ear, and I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. So this is the prophet Isaiah is talking about how the heavenly father had opened his ear and, and put the prophecies within him, man. He put the put the spirit in him to, to what? Do the work, man. Just like he's done to us in these days. Ain't none of us just all of a sudden woke up and said, you know what, I'm going to go out there on the highways and buy one. No, man. The Heavenly Father put the spirit on you. You see, the Heavenly Father opened up your ears. The Heavenly Father let you know what you had to do. And you were not rebellious, which is why you out there, man. So you know damn well the Heavenly Father is going to deliver you in the time of need, man. Keep that confidence. Keep that faith, man. Because without it, you wouldn't be able to stand. Verse 6, it says, I gave my back to the smiters. Right. What is it? What are the smiters? That's the, 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 the enemy, man. These scoffers. And in his case, the, the, the Israelites who were, who were rebellious against the prophecies, man. 
killing the prophets. They were smiting the prophet Isaiah, man. And my cheeks, them that plucked off the hair. So they were, they've ripped his hair out. I hid not my face from shame or spitting. He's been spit on, shame. And I've seen, you know, I've seen this happen to, to many of the brothers at camp, man. Going through all sorts of, all sorts of stuff, man. This is a sign that you're in the right spirit. Otherwise, the world will love and expect you and, and, and accept you because you would be of the world, man. Verse 7, it says, For the Lord God will help me. You see that, man? He will help me. Therefore, shall I not be confounded. This is the type of spirit you got to be in going out there, man. It says, Therefore, have I set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. And what is a flint? A flint is even harder than rock, man. So he said, he said, I made my face like a flint, firm. I won't be ashamed. I'm doing what, what, what I got to do, man. He is near that justifieth me who will contend with me. <laughs> so who's, who's going to fight with you, man? You got Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai in your corner. Let us stand together. Who is mine adversary? Let him come near me. Look at Isaiah. Isaiah was was calling Israel out, man. Was calling the two thirds out. Who who's gonna let him come over here, man? Whoever's my enemy, let him come. Right, verse nine. It says, "Behold, the Lord Power will help me." You see that, man? The heavenly Father will help you. So who gives a damn about these people in the world, man? Is it not written that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal? Right now, we're in the spirit of what? Fishing, man. But soon we'll be translated to the hunter, so long as you endure. Immortality to be placed within you, man. Going on, verse 10, it says, Let's lock you. And then it's verse 9, it says, Lo, they shall wax old as a garment, and the moth shall eat them up. Who is among you that feareth Yahweh, that obeyeth the voice of his servant, that walketh in darkness and hath no light? Let him trust in the name of Yahweh and stay upon his power. This is. the book of Romans chapter uh, also lucky not Romans Matthew chapter Matthew Matthew chapter 18 and verse six and it reads but whosoever shall offend one of these little ones, which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. So again, man, you don't got to you don't got to be all in your feelings and hurt about particular things. At the end of the day, man, what does the scripture say, man? The eyes of Yahweh Shai are a thousand times brighter than the sun, man. So the heavenly Father sees what they be doing, man. Didn't didn't he afflict uh, uh, Aaron's woman for for scoffing against Moses? Struck her with leprosy, man. She didn't actually even she didn't even actually go say that out in the open. She was saying it behind closed doors to her husband, and the heavenly Father got her ass, man. This is the power that we serve. So who gives a damn about these people? Let them have their little, their little soft little victory that they think they got, man. Because so did they to Yahweh Shai, man. They really thought they got one over on Yahweh Shai when they finally put him up and crucified him, man. They went as far as saying, let his blood be upon our seed, man.
But the Heavenly Father hasn't forgotten that. Which is why it's also written in the book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 7. Behold, he cometh with the clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. So what, what do we start out with? Yahweh is fulfilling his role, man. Telling the uh, his disciples, which became apostles, that I could I could I could call upon the heavenly Father and bring twelve legions, man. Twelve sets of seven thousand angels to come and, and deliver me and destroy this place, man. To to to, to destroy Pontius Pilate and all these scoffers, man. What a great feeling! But guess what? He's gonna have that feeling. Does not the book, uh, the, the, the scriptures tell us that Yahweh Shai said, I will not meet thee as a man? So, all those who had a hand against him, especially these damn Romans who actually physically pierced him, man, what does it say? And all kinds of the er kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so Amon, and be wailing like an like a Irish banshee at the return of Yahweh Shai, man. And as we just read, he's going to give you the victory over all your enemies, man. So again, there ain't no need to be all caught up in your feelings and what have you. You see, I'll go ahead and grab one more example here. This is the book of uh, John. Chapter 10 and verse 22, and it reads... Locky, let me just get to the main point. Verse 39. It says, Therefore they saw again to take him, but he escaped out of their hand. <laughs> so, you know, I just wanted to grab that to show how Yahweh Shai was maneuvering around these people, man. The scriptures tell us to be. Uh, uh, wise as a serpent, yet harmless as a dove, man. We even have the account of, of Paul telling telling the, the 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 Edomite ruler that he can repent, man. Fulfilling the, the 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 wisdom written within the scriptures about being mindful of how you speak to those in high authority, man. There's a particular way to conduct yourself in certain situations, man. You don't get out here on these streets and and, and act a damn fool. When you know damn well we're being watched. We don't get out there and start beating people. Even though we get in our feelings, you may you may think about getting carnal. But yeah, that's where you rebuke that thought, man. The Heavenly Father is gonna is is the is the Avenger, man. And he's gonna give us the last laugh at the end of the day, man. Especially for those who 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 truly believe in that and show that through faith, man. Like I like to say, one of the best ways to prove your faith is by is by calling upon the Heavenly Father instead of getting carnal, man. Somebody gets crazy with you at work, whatever the case may be, man, call upon Yahweh by Shem Shai. Maybe even curse him, man. As it is written, let them be anathema maranatha, curse unto the coming of Yahweh, man. You see? Because we we know that the Heavenly Father is coming. And you truly show that you believe that, you show that faith when you don't get carnal. Otherwise, you're getting carnal. Hey, you know what you're saying, man? I'm going to take matters into my own hands because the Heavenly Father ain't doing it quick enough. Or maybe you believe he ain't going to do it at all. Yeah, I wish I said it, man. He's a, he, I could call down 12 legions, but I ain't going to, man. Look at him maneuvering through their hand, escaping like he's a, like, like he was some kind of thief instead of getting carnal. Hey, man, no, I, I'm telling you the truth. And started getting, you know, beating up Israelites, which, you know, there's accounts of that. But again, there's particular ways to maneuver in different situations, man. So with that, Lord willing this edify, man, I'm going to go ahead and close it up here. All praises, honor, and glory be unto Yahweh, by Shem, Yahweh, Shai, by Hashem, Rakaha, Kodash, double honors unto the elders and the apostles at GMS, Great Millstone, and peace, love, blessing, salutations unto you sincere, hopeful members of the elect who have been called, that are doing the best to make the calling of their election sure, and don't get carnal, man. Stand firm and endure. Shalom.